a look into that win by the Copenhagen Wolves. Thank you, Freak. A pretty decisive win there by Copenhagen Wolves. And I kind of want to jump right into Champion Select because we saw some interesting prioritization when it come, came to Champion picks and bans comparatively to what we see in NA. Uh, yeah, you see a lot of uh, teams value Ari quite highly. Uh, I think Ari is a really situational champ. I think she's actually really strong, but the problem with Ari is that she relies on your team to play the map really, really well. Like, you need to be able to establish vision control and deny proper vision at, uh, at objective ch like choke points for you to play Ari. I feel like that's a champion that requires a really, really good team to play around her, it irregardless of how good you are at the champion. And so there are four bands that went to mid and they first picked Ari on their 1-2, on their and they didn't control the dragon vision at all that game. And so because of that, they, they, that, that's a team comp and Ari is a team champion that should be going into like the mid game, getting picks and snowballing off those picks. But she wasn't able to do that and they just got out snowballed by a really, really good, uh, or a uh, late game by a good team comp. And I feel like that speaks to the fact that H2K came into Champion Select with a very definitive game plan. They knew they were going for a pick comp. You know, they brought in the Morgana and the, the Elise with the Ari, so they had a lot of CC. But Copenhagen Wolves actually did a fairly decent job of adapting. Whether or not they predicted those, those picks or they were adapting mid Champion Select. Especially, talk to me a little bit about that Champion Select process when you are in a best of five series and you're like, I need to make adjustments to counter this team. First off, H2K's team comp, it was really pick eccentric. And what that means is that you want to get ahead early, you want to win your lane, and had that been a standard 2v2, 1v1 matchup, I think H2K would have won. It really seems like as if H2K has better laners just from history, and just their laning, uh, the, their picks is just a lot of, they're supposed to get a lot of kills. And because Copenhagen Wolves played their game perfectly, 1v2, got three buffs, did everything that they should have done, and even got ahead with a, a weaker early game team comp, they naturally just won the game, and they had really good vision control, like Scar said. And Copenhagen Wolves is looking like a completely different team, which is kind of surprising since most people would say that HUK had the advantage going into these games. So let's talk a little bit about that three buff start that you just mentioned, because it definitely points to the fact that Copenhagen Wolves was prepared. They they knew exactly what they wanted to do. They had clearly done some of their homework. So what's the proper response to that? Um. Well, uh, the thing is, you should be automatically thinking that they could 1v2. Because as soon as they pick Mundo into Rise, that lane isn't that great. And Mundo's 1v2 is really, really good, as opposed to Rise's 1v2, which is really poor. And, and they didn't seem to be able to understand that they were going to get 1v2, because they sent both their duo lane bot lane, rather than keep the support open to make a... Uh, play around the map. Not only that, no, neither team established deep ward control, and so they pretty much were just play like a guessing game. On they kind of knew where people started, but they didn't know exactly where people were gonna go. And so they had vision on the late invade on the red side, but conceding three buffs uh, is like terrible, and they weren't able to get anything in response. Like I think off the three buff concession, they could have maybe forced a four man. Uh, drag right there because they saw on the left side ward they were going back to blue side uh, the, two, the jungle and the top lane are going to blue side the farm and so they could have maybe forced a dragon and dragon dance the, the damage but it was like it's like a really desperate move at that point the, the correct counterplay was just that the support needed to be ready to be active and moving around the map and maybe that they need, need to establish better work control at level 1 I think a lot of teams they like staying bottom as they're dueling, when they feel like they're better players, when they feel like they have better matchups, better picks, and they want to be able to adapt correctly. But because of that, you need to be able to ad ad adapt correctly. They need to be able to stop them from getting three buffs or either get dragon out of that. And they didn't do that. And that's not something that you can afford to do when you have early game matchups. And that's just what happened. They need to be able to not get outscaled and not give them advantages when they shouldn't be. Which is exactly what I believe H2K's mindset is, that we do have stronger laners. So I would expect to see Ziggs either taken away or banned out because what that champion essentially did was prevent Ari from being able to capitalize on that first blood that she got even. We saw her walk into lane after her first buy with a needlessly large rod and then pick up a kill. Should have been an early DFG and some, some picks to follow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I really think that um, Ziggs is like a really big anti-throw champion. Like Ziggs and Tristana are two champions I consider like once you get the late game, it's extremely hard to throw a big lead because they just do like they poke, they siege. They're like perfect champions in that they can disengage and, and they have a lot of ability to control w control like zones and stuff like that. I think that uh, I would have rather just let, let them have Orianna. And if you wanted to run Ari, because Ori is much easier to get picked 
picks on and much easier to gank than Ziggs is. And you can go into like a late game scenario where you can get good positioning on an immobile champion like Ori rather than like the same kind of position against a champion like Ziggs, which can establish better zones of control with his E and can just like hop away with his W. All right, I want to jump into a couple of replays just so we can kind of decipher uh, Coven Eagles kind of their their game plan and their and their decisiveness. So we're going to pull the first one up. It's about 22 minutes into the game. And what I love about this replay is that there are no kills that come from it, but that there's a lot of really clear decision making on the side of Copenhagen Wolves. So especially if you don't mind taking away this replay. Well, the big thing is um, they're right behind. HK is right behind this point. They have a pick comp. They need to be able to establish vision and have Copenhagen Wolves walk in and be able to use Charm, use Elisa, and use Morgana, Bind. Like, you have so many ways to catch people, but they're not using it. They're letting Copenhagen Wolves walk in, get control of the situation, and they're just going to walk down mid. They're going to go for the inhib mid, and here HK is going for the dragon, which they have to at this point, or they can just go back. But either way, this is not a good situation for them. And they weren't able to get any picks. And Ziggs even steals the dragon. Everything goes wrong for them completely. Unfortunately, Copain wasn't doesn't get the inhib turret, but they're already the damage is already dealt. They're already behind. They lose two objectives and they don't get the control that they need uh, for HDK to really pull ahead. They don't get any kills at all. And they don't establish the vision that they need to get those kills happening. They also managed to bait the Rise TP out of that as well. So it was just kind of an altogether a clean sweep of globals at that point. Now I want to jump even just two minutes further. Scar, I touch on the point about the strength of Ziggs and how it is an anti-throw champion. So we're going to pull replay up 24 and a half minutes into the game. I'm going to let you kind of run away with this one and, and break it down for me. Okay, well, they're getting really desperate right now. Like, they're looking for a pick. Like, they have to get something started to get, bring the game back in their favor. They run through a lot of Ziggs poke, and they run through such a tight area trying to chase down the Ziggs. Ziggs just ulties, hits three people with ulti immediately. They realize they lost. Because Ari can't go in with that low health without dying instantly. Nami Wave hits two, and they try to disengage against uh, Trist, which has a lot of resets. And Trist and Kha'Zix, which just eventually just clean up this. And actually, uh, Copenhagen Wolves did a really safe play. I would have just recommend, or I think a Baron would have been a really easy get off that because they got a free pick and everyone flashed and all ultis were down and they knew that they had no vision on it or they knew that they can control vision on it. So it's really, really easy for them to get a Baron there. But instead, they went for a really, really safe top turret and just backed and reestablished vision on Baron. So at that point, too, uh, H2K had no health across the board. We saw Lease at 5%, Ari at 5%, Lucian at 10%, you know, thereabouts. Uh, in that situation, though, right? Understanding that these teams, they're all professional players. They are prone to mistakes. H2K, what's the game plan from there? Especially when you are behind, you are running a pick comp, you know you're up against this late game. What's your best chance at survival in a game like that? So from just watching this game, they their vision control is completely poor. It, it's not even a question of, you know, were they behind or not? It's just they had a team comp where they're supposed to do it, and they didn't do it. So what they should do now is force 2v2s. Go back into standards. Go go back into team comps where you don't need to go for vision control. You just go for a skin like him. Chisana might be a huge priority, and I feel like mid pick is going to be really important. Not giving uh, Kobe Hang Wolves the Ziggs pick. I mean, Sword XD, people were, were saying, not, is not as good as uh, Forbidden, but he played really well. He was even behind a kill, uh, the first play, too, and he still completely farmed, did extremely well. And he did, I think he would be the MVP of that game just because of his overall zone control. So I want to put you both on the spot real quick, especially you kind of already touched on your thoughts for the next game. But in this series, we're going to game two here. So, Scar, I'll start with you. What do you expect to see? Maybe a couple specifics, maybe, uh, either pick spans or play style wise adjustments they'll make. And do you have a prediction for who might walk away? Uh I understand that both teams want to really control mid lane in terms of mid lane bans. Like, that was their strategy going in on, on draft. Uh, if they want to do that, they need to be, be really, like, I agree with Dick Special. I think their vision control uh, is not that great, H2Ks. And so they should be looking for stuff that de dominates lane and maybe skills well uh, as well. And then so with that in mind, maybe they should look for something along the lines of, like, I, I I think Ziggs would be a good pick, but maybe Febbin wants to carry hard. Like I can understand Ari. Uh, I, I know I, I know both players really really want Oriana, so Oriana is going to be a very contested pick as usual. And then um, I, I guess in this situation, they just want to make sure that if they can't get a two v two lane set up, that they that they at least scale really well into the late game because I think they can take team fights even without great vision control as long as they have like appropriate scaling. So do you think if they make those changes that H2K will walk away with the game? Or are you thinking that Copenhagen Wolves might have this locked up? 
I honestly want to see how they adapt to it because I think Copenhagen Wolves already established that they're they understand one v two is a lot better than H two K. So th so with that in mind, it's like well, how do they adapt? Now I want to see how they play out the level one. If they can, if they deport the level one and then react appropriately, then maybe I I give them higher chances of winning. But as it looks like, it looks like Copenhagen Wolves may just run away with the series. Alrighty, then a special a quick prediction at all. I think if H2K can adapt and win this game, I think they'll win it. And if they lose this game, I think it's going to be 3 0. All right. Wolves. There it is. All right. We've got a couple predictions to keep track of. We do have to take a quick break. But when we come back, it's game two between Copenhagen Wolves and H2K Gaming. Don't miss it. Maybe it's probably an outer, but I'm going to be under fire soon. And then here comes the ultimate. Oh! Well, that just happened. All right. Fibi one, Fibi one, Fibi one. Catch your flash. I'm all there, guys. Fibi one, Trashy. Fibi one, Fibi one, Fibi one. Trashy, Trashy. Trashy, 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 Trashy. Sorry. Nice. Great, guys. What a Baron. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job, guys.